Hi guys, I'm the British WW2 man and today I got another RF kit video. So this is part eight now, it should be. So let's get started. Uh this is the RF um pattern thirty seven webbing set for um air crew. Um but it would vary a lot depending on which person it was. Some choose chose not to have the cross straps, etc. etc. Um, <coughs> so, because they might get in the way in the way in the aircraft. Anyway, so yeah, as the name suggests, it was adopted in 1937. Um, these parts are all interchangeable with uh, the other Panther 37 webbing sets, so the Army version as well. Um, so yeah, it's got. This is for uh, either um, sergeant or um, to an officer, really. Um, so yeah, this is got. It's got a Webley um, Volvo holster there. Um, all this webbing is original, apart from one of the cross straps, which is. Uh, Danish, I think. Anyway, <sighs> um, yeah, this is just my wooden um, Webley that I made. It's to do because I can't really get a replica one because my dad. But anyway, um, it's the holster's dated 1940. It's Air Ministry. It's um, unissued, which is pretty awesome, I think. Um, yeah, it's got the, the this thing here is for a cleaning rod. Um, so yeah, um, this is the ammo pouch for Webley. It's 1942 dated ME and Co. Um, which is the standard company that made pack by some Webley. And inside the thing, I got some spent um, 44 shells because uh, Webley, one of the marks of Webley, I forget which now was in. 44 caliber, so yeah, got a couple of shells in there, cut cheese cases, I should say. Um, so yeah, uh, cross straps, uh, 44 dated. Um, this one, Belgium, no, Danish, I think that's what that means. I think that's got a crown or something, anyway. Um, so yeah. It's all pretty in pretty nice condition. Um, these would have also been worn by ground personnel, so people guarding bases, etc. The RF regiment, um, but the RF regiment usually tended to use webbing of, of that colour because it blended in a lot more than bright blue. So, yeah, that's the webbing set, and I'll move on to. This is my flying helmet and goggles set up. Um, this helmet, I think, flying helmets could be First World War. Because um, it's missing the big ear pieces that it should have here for um, communications, for radio, for the radio. Um, so that means it's probably First World War. Because um, they had biplanes and they didn't have radios. Um, these goggles are original British um, the helmet could be anything really I think it's probably either British or German First World War it's got a quite nice lining I'll show that later so yeah these were issued to all aircrew the goggles were IF aircrew um, so yeah that's basically it forgot to say that the goggles are original as well. An interesting thing about the flying helmet is it's got a cut on the side of it which has been sewn up so it could be a battle damage or it could just be it got ripped. And also um, the RAF pattern flying helmets like I said would have the earpieces for the um, for the communications. Um, for radios that's what I was looking for and they'd have a little thing that goes down here on the chin strap 
uh, which you would attach your oxygen mask to. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and here is the inside of it. If you look, um, it's got quite nice lining. I couldn't find a label in there. So, move on to the flying jacket. Just thought before I move on to the flying jacket, I'll show you these, which is a new buy that I got. Um, it's what I think um, is just either at the end of the First World War or post First World War. Because if you look at these guys, these, these are um, in 1908 Pat Nasty tunics, I believe. And then if you have a look on this guy's arm. You can see he's got an IF rank um, thing above his sergeant stripes, which means I think he's a mechanic or something like that. Um, so I think this could be like um, for uh, RAC photograph. Uh, so if you, any of you guys know um, more about it, knows, tell me, please. Here's another thing I got, which is uh, an RF um, clothing ration book for um, 18 months. So, yeah. So, here's the inside of it. The replica one, unfortunately, not original. But, so what? It shows what it would have been like. So, yeah. Still pretty awesome. Um, and I've also got this, which is I've shown you what it is in another video, but it's a thing that tells you what to do if you are shot down, etc., etc. And it says not to be carried in aircraft. Of course, what am I doing? Keeping it inside my flying jacket. Um, anyway, so I shouldn't do that. Um, but still. Anyway, so moving on to the actual flying gun. So here's my flying jacket it's not original um it we think it was probably a prop used in a film sometime anyway um it's pretty awesome it's had a label cut out so even if it was original which we doubt very much it was it's gone uh so yeah kind of it's a big hint that it's not original um so yeah it's a sheepskin jacket um they'd um I think they were usually privately purchased, but some, I believe, were issued. Um, and yeah, it, it's basically designed to keep you really warm uh, when you're when you're um, in the plane, because flying quite high in the bombers or things like that, it can get quite cold. So they wear these. Um, so yeah, basically this is, I think this is the end of the RAF, um, kit video that, that I got. Um, if I manage to find some of my other stuff, which is gone walk about in my room, I might do a part 9, but I doubt I will. Because it's kind of getting a bit too long with all these parts. So, yeah, the reason why I'm doing them in short each parts is because um, sometimes it's not very nice for you have to have to watch a really long thing um, and it's not particularly good in your eyes so also it's a lot faster to upload so yeah that's basically it um, come on subscribe Not the end of the video, because there's this. There's my deactivated Leon film number four, Mark One. Um, yeah, it's it's nineteen forty, either forty one or forty two dated. Um, bolt action. I got a review on it. Um, 
and I won't cock it because it's, it's dry fire. It's not, usually not that good for the spring. But yeah, anyway, uh, I researched the seal number and found it was made up in, in a factory up north. Um, probably in 1941. Um, so yeah, the sling. Um, it's an RAF. I don't have one, but I might get one. Um, these would have been issued to uh, the RAF regiment or the normal RAF people like the mechanics when they first did their basic training. Um, so, yeah, it's got a 10 bo round box magazine here, um, bolt action, and sights up to 1300 yards. And this is the variant, got the sights variant with which do that. There's another type which is a windy type. I think that means that these sights were replaced after the war. I'm not sure. But anyway, the safety is on the side here. Works like this. That basically means that the bolt can't go up or down. Works like that. It means the bolt can work. We can get it to work for you. <sighs> if it's cocked like this. Um, also, won't fire. Put the safety on. Fires. Also, you can put it to half cock. Lots of pe people do this. They put it to half cock and they fire it. Something like that. Anyway, um, they fire it and they're like, oh crap, the, the rifle won't work. And then the reason why is you put it to half cock. Pull it out to full cock, which I can't do with my left hand. Put the full cock. And fire it. The bolt will work. I have no idea why they designed that. I think it's pretty stupid. Because it's basically quite dangerous if you're in action and you accidentally... You've fired your rifle. And then you look back and you've got to run somewhere this gets caught and pulled back in a piece of your kit and then you go to firing like it's not firing pull, pull up the bolt bolt doesn't pull up no oh, great and then you get shot anyway um so that's that it was um issued with a pig sticker bayonet um i've got one i'll show you in a minute so here's a pig sticker bayonet and here's one the rifle like this, I'll pause and show it fixed. Okay, this bayonet isn't fixed properly on, but I can't find my other one. It does fix on. Um, the reason why it doesn't fix on is because it's all jammed up and seized up and with rust on the inside, but it's basically just for showing. I don't think it's illegal actually to walk around it reenactments with bayonets fixed unless you have reenacted insurance. Um, so. Yeah, that's basically the Leon from number 4 Mark 1. It's covered in another video that I'll probably leave in the link in the description. So if you want to check that out, uh, by all means go ahead. Comment and subscribe. Bye.